Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the System.io podcast with me, Natasha Pinto. Today, our guest is Jo Barnes. So she's a globe-trotting lifestyle business entrepreneur. Welcome, Jo. Hello. Hi, Natasha. How are you? It's good to be here. I'm very well. Thank you so much. It's very exciting to have you here as well. So before I dig into what a lifestyle business is, please, can you take me through a little bit of your history? So where did you think you were going with your career when you started? And then how did you get to where you are now today? Sure. Um, well, I, um, I was brought up in a very small little town in the south of England. Um, and I, in my 20s, I got a job working for a company and I was managing theatres and concert venues around the country. So I was travelling quite a lot around the, the UK at the time, which I think is where my travel bug came from. Um, but all the while I was doing that and I had a very, my parents threw into me a very strong work ethic. So I always worked very, very hard through my 20s, um, but the pay wasn't so good. And I always thought to myself, gosh, I'm working all these hours and I'm creating all these great results and I'm not really seeing the benefits. It's all going into the pockets of my bosses and the directors of the company and everything. And my dad um, was an entrepreneur. And so I kind of always had this hankering to start my own thing. And if, you know, if I was going to work this hard, then why wasn't I working this hard for myself? Um, so I kind of knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I really, you know how there's people that seem to know exactly what they want to do in life. You know, they, they've totally and utterly mapped out their passion. They know what it is. They're going to go and do it. Well, I had no clue. I had no clue what my passion was, what business I wanted to run, what have you. So I kind of tried my hands at a few things in the UK very, very badly. Um, and then I met my partner, who's now my husband. Um, and he actually had a great friend who became my friend too, who was doing this thing called online marketing. And his friend lived in Cyprus and we went to visit him in Cyprus. And I remember standing on the balcony of this apartment, looking out at the sea caves um, near Paphos thinking, oh, <laughs> now this is, this is the life, you know? No, <laughs> I don't want to be stuck in an office back in the UK. I, I want to be sat on this balcony. Um, so as it happened, this friend who was teaching us a little bit about online marketing and I'd then, by then started signing up to seminars all about how to do webinars and I went to this great social media weekend and joined um, what was then the Chris Farrell Mentor Me program who he became a great friend of mine actually and he's still in the, the business now. Um, and so I was learning all about it and then our friends went traveling and asked if we wanted to go and house sit their apartment in Cyprus. So we basically sold everything we owned scooped up our four-year-old daughter, jumped on a plane and said, come on, let's go and do this. Let's go and live this life, even though we really had very little savings or any kind of safety net. Um, so that's, that's not, a, uh, it's not financial advice or a recommendation, by the way. It's just what we did because of our personalities. Um, and so basically we sat on this beautiful balcony in Cyprus trying to build this online business. Um, and uh, that's kind of where it all started, really. That that those were the very. I've still got videos on YouTube of me in those very early days talking about all the different internet marketing, um, you know, strategies I was learning at the time. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where it all started. That's a brilliant story, and I think or something that people will relate to, um, especially that kind of wanting desperately to do something with your life, but not necessarily knowing what your passion is, what you're meant to be doing. I think a lot of people struggle with that. I know I even, I'm not sure, I've got a degree in theatre, a degree in education. I've been a teacher, I've worked in theatres as well. I'm now doing this, I'm an online content writer. I get to pick up my laptop and work wherever I like, which is kind of amazing. And I'm also planning my own big move, but I've got the side hustle at the moment. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. But what you just said, Natasha, is so important. And I actually wrote a blog post about this last week because I got an email from one of my favorite sort of mentors um, talking about how knowing what your passion is and getting clear on that is so important to your entrepreneurial journey. And I've actually written a blog post saying, I think that's rubbish. I'm sorry. But that's like what it sends chills down my spine when I read that because some of us didn't pop out of the womb knowing we were going to go and, and, and make rocket ships or something. Do you know what I mean? We just, there are so many of us that actually are multi-passionate and we have lots of different things that we want to do. And I've never, you know, I'm, I'm hurtling towards 50 at the moment and I still don't really know what it is I want to do with my life. <laughs> so 
you know, you just you just do. I, I remember reading a book by James Altucher once, actually, called Choose Yourself. It's a very good book. And he talked about living your life in themes. So, you know, what theme are you currently in? So, you know, sometimes you might be in the theme of, of, of doing online content writing, which you're just loving, you know, and then another time you might be in the theme of doing something else. So I don't think I don't think we have to rely on the fact there's one calling or one passion or one thing we're on this world to do. And if some people have that, fantastic. But for the rest of us who don't know, just pick what you think you really love doing right now and do that. <laughs> That's excellent advice. It's a great place to start because I think if you doing something that you love, it's a lot easier to do and a lot easier to not be great at when you start and get better at. Um, uh, Last kind of question on your career and how you've been doing is, can you kind of give us a a ballpark figure of what it looked like when you saw your first little inkling of success in online business versus how you're doing now? Sure. So when we... um... When we were sat on this beautiful balcony, um, I realized fairly early on that one of the critical um, moves to success was going to be in creating a lot of content and building an audience. I don't know how I, I knew that. I guess probably from my history in, in, in theatres and all the rest of it, it was always about how do we get bums on seats, you know, to, to see the show. That was always kind of a... So I guess it was inbuilt in me that that's what I felt I needed to do. Somehow I needed to get bums on seats. I needed to get myself in front of people. Um, And I proved this by releasing a product very early on before I had built any kind of reputation online or an audience or an email list um, or as I in the early days, let's say, of building that audience. And I I sold four products at the time and made a total sum of twenty seven dollars after having put this product, this video product together. Um, and of course, I didn't have the confidence either to charge, you know, big amounts. So I was only charging like seven bucks or nine bucks or whatever. And anyway, so it was it was good practice. Um, but what I actually did is I there's also an element of timing involved sometimes, I think, in, in what you choose to do. Um, but I it, I was got in there right at the beginning of when Facebook fan pages were becoming a bit of a craze. And so what I actually did is I spent about six, eight months just making video after video after video showing people how to use these Facebook fan pages to grow their online business and to build an email list, um, which I felt was really important. And I built my own email list by, you know, creating this content and helping people to build these Facebook fan pages. Um, And so then when I launched my next video course, I now had 10,000, 12,000, whatever subscribers on my email list that I was now selling to. And so my second video course, I did twenty, thirty thousand dollars you know, worth of sales. And then the real big, um, and I, I tell you a quick story here. Uh, we, were, we were up against it. Myself and my partner were up against it. We didn't have a lot of savings. We had a little girl to deal with um, and our friends had come back to Cyprus. And so we'd actually gone to Australia, which is where my partner is from. And we were living in his parents' basement because we were sort of running out of cash. And um, we went for a walk one day uh, just down the road from his house. And we were like, you know, we need to pack this up. You know, I've made some money, enough to kind of get us through a few months. But it was it was a tough old gig, you know. It was really tough. And we were like, we need to, we're not going to make this. This is, we need to pack this up and go and get jobs. And I remember walking back, listening to a Tony Robbins podcast. And I can't remember what the podcast was now, but it was, you know, good old Tony Robbins, upbeat, you know, you can be who you want to be, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I remember going and saying, we are not giving up. We are going to give this another two or three months. We're going to make this work. Um, and I was sitting in my mum's lounge, actually, in England when we launched my membership site at the time, which was called the Social Networking Academy. Um, and we did $117,000 worth of sales in seven days. So we launched it. I was sat in my mum's lounge and we did like, I don't know, 50 grand off the bat or something. And I was like, oh, oh my God. And then, yeah, we did that in seven days. And so that was my, that was all the proof I needed really that this could now work. Um, and from there, we grew the business. Um, it, we had ups and downs. It was very feast or famine. I was really in at the launch 
period when in the old days of internet marketing where it was all about launches, big launches, you know, Jeff Walker had come out with his launch formula and Frank Kern was the big name at the time and all those guys. So it was constant launches. So our world was feast or famine. We'd go six months with no money and then all of a sudden we'd do a big launch, you know, and then that launch would last us for the next however long. And then, you know, so it was exhausting. It was a really exhausting um, few years. Um, but it was great because we had the freedom to travel and do what we wanted. Um, and then we kind of tripped over e-commerce and we got into Amazon and we started selling on Amazon. And then that sort of pretty much changed our financial life forever. That was what sealed the deal. And um, we did over seven figures in one year with Amazon and um, went on to um, grow that over the following sort of two or three years. And then we sold that business in early 2020 um, and had a bit of a rest. And now I'm pursuing a sort of another little business model that I'm just having a good time launching. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been, that's a quick pricey of, of the last 11 years. <laughs> that's one hell of a story. And I think, yeah, a lot of people need to kind of get ready for that kind of journey because the road to entrepreneurship is not like A to B, it's A to B. Yes. It's very much a roller coaster. Um, and I think the fact that you're kind of riding it and just going with the, the feast and famine, going with the work you put in and learning as you like roll with those punches is a very important skill especially for entrepreneurs at the moment. Yes, it is. Yes, you, I, I really feel that one of the greatest skills you could have if you want to go and build your own online business, lifestyle business, any kind of business really, is that adaptability to change, just that ability and tenacity really to just keep going even when you feel like you're banging your head against a brick wall and not really going anywhere too, too fast. Yeah. Definitely. All right, then let's dig into what a lifestyle business is. So can you give us kind of a broad definition and then discuss some of the like real benefits of having a lifestyle business? Yeah, sure. A lifestyle business really is just about for ultimate freedom. It's about you doing what you want to do when you want to do it with who you want to do it. In fact, Tim Ferriss wrote in the four hour work week, which was one of my inspirations for doing everything I'm doing. He wrote about something he coined the freedom multiplier. And that was like the three W's. And that's doing what you want, when you want, with who you want. You know, and the more control you have over those three W's, then the more freedom you, you have in life. Um, and that's essentially what a lifestyle business is. So as opposed to a big startup business um, where you're going to go out and get, you know, venture capital funding or have investors and you're going to make millions and all the rest of it. And actually, you're probably going to be tied to a desk and an office and overheads and costs and responsible staff and, and investors and profits and goodness knows what for the next 20 years of your life. A lifestyle business is almost the opposite. It's about taking something you enjoy doing now, a passion, if you like, right now um, that you have or something you just really enjoy doing um, and turning that into a business that generates you enough income to live the life you want to live. So depending on the kind of life style that you want, which is different for everybody. So for us, it's being able to travel the world. Um, for other people, it might simply be having the freedom to get up and work their own hours in their PJs through the day. For others, it might be that they've got different hobbies that they want to pursue through the day and they want to be able to work two or three hours at night. For others, it might be mums with young babies who want to be able to spend all their time with their kids and just be able to do two or three hours when the kids have gone to bed. It's that kind of thing. It's just deciding what's your ideal lifestyle and then really determining, and this is the key to it, I think, this is where a lot of people go wrong, is determining actually how much do you need to live that? Because so many people think they need millions of dollars to go out and live their ideal lifestyle, when actually you, you rarely will need that amount of money. Um, you know, as long as you're willing, and this is the key thing, I think, as long as you're not into driving the latest Ferrari or having the big four-bedroom swimming pool, villa that's better than your neighbours or all that crap that we're sold into consumerism you know the latest nike shoes or you willing to just get rid of all of that and actually look at what is my what do i want from my life you know not the things that i want to buy what what do i what experiences do i want to have how do i actually want to live i think you'll find that that is actually much much cheaper um than you think it's going to be. And quick story, a, a, good, a good friend of mine, uh, one of my old community members from years ago, 
her and her husband sold up a little ice cream store that they had for years because they wanted to travel the world. They house sit around the world. They love dogs and animals and stuff. So they go and they house sit with people. They're free as a bird on a couple of thousand dollars a month, you know? Yeah. Um, so for less than, for less than what, $25,000, $30,000 a year, they are as free as a bird and they have the best life. Whenever I speak to them, they're somewhere else. They're living somewhere else. They're in a different house, in a different part of the world, and they're having the best life. So, you know, for some people, it might be a couple of grand. For others, it might be 10 grand a month. For others, it might be 50 grand a month. It doesn't really matter, but it's determining what that number is and then saying, okay, so now I know how much I need. What do I now need to do on a daily basis to generate that? Um, and how can I do that doing something I love to do? And believe me, it doesn't matter what you love to do, whether you enjoy making jigsaw puzzles, whether you enjoy making jewellery, whether you love watching movies on Netflix. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what. If, you know, you're a huge Game of Thrones fan or whatever the latest thing is on, on Netflix. You can build a business out of that these days. It is because you've got a global reach. You know, you're reaching millions and millions of people. So it doesn't matter what you want to do. You can build a business out of it as long as there's another passionate audience that shares those interests. You know, you can build a business. I think so. that's that's a really important thing to kind of put out there because you're right. A lot of uh, stuff gets lost in the noise of, oh, I made this much money in a week and this is the fancy car I have and the fancy house I live in and kind of skipping over all the effort that actually goes into that. And what people want more, I think, than all of this money is, like you said, freedom. You want to be able to choose your hours. You want to be able to choose how you work, where you work, what you're doing. Um, and yeah, those are some of the serious benefits of a lifestyle business. You get to pick your lifestyle yes. first and kind of yes. focus on that. So yes, um, that, that is that's the key benefit. You just said it right there. That's our complete mantra in our house: lifestyle first, and lifestyle comes first, and the businesses come second. Absolutely, I think that's a great way to kind of get into the life you actually want to live. Now, how do you go about monetizing a lifestyle business? So, if you figure out like what you're passionate about, if you find like the business idea that you want to use. How do you go about making money from that? Because I think lots of people can start like a blog for a because about their passion or they can come up with a YouTube channel or like a Twitch account where they're streaming all the games they love playing. But how do you make money from that? Sure. Okay. Um, I love this question because there are just so many ways to, to, to monetize your, your passions or your interests. Um, the first thing you have to do is even though it is a lifestyle business, you do need to look at it as a business. Um, because, you know, you, you may want to go on, um, I mean, give me, what's a really, really popular, I'm just going to go with Game of Thrones because I'm not a big TV watcher and that's the last one I can remember um, literally just binge watching. Um, but let's just say that you are and you, you somehow you want to monetize your interest in Game of Thrones. If you just start going and writing a blog and talking about your interests, then you're, you're, it's unlikely you're going to get very far, Right because you're not looking at it like a business. And looking at something like a business is about asking yourself, what value can I bring to the person that's gonna be reading this or consuming this? And that's the key difference. It's how am I actually adding value to somebody else? So you wanna go out and start a lifestyle blog, let's say, there's a lot of lifestyle blogs out there these days, you know, which are travel bloggers or people, who, you know, mum bloggers or baking or, you know, interior decorating or, you know, you've got the pioneer woman who talks about her life out on the farm and, you know, you've got all these lifestyle blogs. Um, the ones that are successful have something in common, which is they add a huge amount of value to the audience that's consuming the content. The ones that kind of die in the mist are the ones where it's somebody getting online and going, oh, this morning I did this and, and then I did that and this is my life. And there's no value. You know, there's no, it's just somebody telling a story for no real good reason. Um, so that, I think, is the key thing. No matter what you're interested in, it's asking yourself how, how is this actually going to add value to somebody else's life, whether it's through the content or the product, whether it's through information, entertainment, transformational value, whatever it is, that's sort of the key. Um, but from a monetizing point of view, a couple of things. So right now, we are in an incredible time for anybody who wants to start e-commerce businesses. Um, the pandemic has just exacerbated this move from offline retail to online retail much faster, I think, than anybody ever thought possible. So um, 
over the next few years, online retail and e-commerce businesses are going to boom. Um, now, Amazon clearly is still the biggest player out there. It's highly unlikely it's going to get knocked off its perch anytime soon. But people love micro brands. If you can build a really nice micro brand around a very specific interest, then there is absolutely no reason why you can't build a really nice little business. And this is the difference. People will go out and say, well, I can't compete against Amazon. Why do you want to compete against Amazon? That's the point of a lifestyle business. You want to go and compete against Amazon? Well, that's a different business model. That is a startup. It's a VC. It's a whatever. A lifestyle business, we're talking about generating five or 10 grand a month. You don't need to compete against Amazon to generate five or 10 grand a month. You just need to find a really nice niche that, you know, with products that you really um, are interested in and that you think other people want and that there's a market out there for, and then you can go and source those products. Um, or these days, you can get into e-commerce with pretty much no money down by doing print on demand or drop shipping. It's a bit tougher to get into these days, but certainly print on demand is a great way into the e-commerce world. Um, and, you know, then you can test the market. And then when you get some products that are selling well, you can start to then, you know, sell your own. I mean, these days you can make money by going onto Canva, downloading different templates of planners or journals or checklists or whatever, um, re, re, um, sorry, before you download, rebranding them with your own brand and colors and pictures and things, downloading them, uploading them to Etsy and selling them as printables. Um, you know, so you can actually, I was listening to a podcast just a couple of weeks ago of a woman who's doing that while raising her children and working a job. And she's doing $10,000 a month by selling these Etsy print, printables. Um, now, I know it all sounds, oh, it's too good to be true, Joe. It's too good to be true. But the reason it's not is because on the internet, you are reaching such a vast amount of people. When we launched our Amazon business, we were selling on Amazon. We sold a cooking thermometer. That was our first product, right? We sold 85,000 units in our first year of this one little plastic, you know, headed cooking thermometer thing. Uh, it took our breath. We were like, what? How, how, how are there that many people buying <laughs> this cooking thermometer? Um, and that, that was like $1.2 million of sales from this one little product. We didn't do anything amazing, extraordinary, particularly unique, whatever. It's just we got in front of this global marketplace. Um, it's a little bit more challenging in your own store because you've got to go out and find the traffic. But it's right there. If you're willing to go and do your TikTok videos or get on Instagram or write content and, and go for SEO, you know, however you're willing to do it. Um, and I think that's where people do get tripped up a bit because the key is, you know, that the product's there or the shop is there or your blog is there, but the critical thing, and this is where we succeeded in Amazon where many other people we knew didn't, is that we were willing to just do something every single day. And we didn't give up even when it seemed like we were against the tide or there were other competitors coming in or where, we just kept going, kept going one foot in front of the other every single day. And from my experience over the last 11 years, working with lots of um, people who want to build online businesses, is they get sick of doing one thing too quickly and they see another bright, shiny object and think, well, let's try that. That looks like it's going to be quicker and easier. And then they pack up with that and they say, well, let's try that because that, but actually if you just stay on your path and keep going, if somebody's done it and has proven it can work, then I guarantee you it can work. So, sorry, back to your question. So you've got e-commerce, so you can sell physical products online, okay? Yeah. Um, so that's one way of monetizing. Um, you've got online courses. Online courses are huge, always have been. It's how I made my money. Um, so you basically build an audience. Build an audience, by the way, is at the crux of everything I'm talking about. You build an audience, you find out what they really want to know, or the chances are you've built an audience around your specific niche or whatever, and you build your, your online course. Um, and it's a great way to monetize your expertise. Let's say you are a maths tutor. Let's say that's what you love to do. But you don't want to teach at the schools anymore. You want to work from home. Wowie, you could build a whole online course, uh, you know, teaching kids maths um, or helping kids through their IGCSE two years. My daughter's going through that at the moment. Really good maths course. And you can sell that on your own platform like system.io. <laughs> um, or you can go off and sell it on Udemy or Skillshare or one of the online course platforms. You know, so you can utilize whatever skills you've got, turn it into video courses, and you can then go and sell those online. So that's another way. 
Um, you can take your knowledge and skills and turn them into ebooks, and you can go and start a business selling Kindle ebooks. Um, and again, I mean, it's tough. None, I'm not saying any of this is super easy. You've got to be committed and be willing to do the work. But with Kindle books, if you were willing to knock out a 10, 15,000 word book every month and line them up as a series and keep promoting and telling people about them and all the rest of it, um, then you can start to build a decent monthly income through selling Kindle books. Um, you can do a blog. That's my business model I'm really going for at the moment. I, I've always done everything. I've always been a social media girl. Everything I've done has been on social media. And I decided, right, I'm going to build a blog. I'm going to build a blog. I'm going to grow it. I'm going to get up into the 80s, domain authority. I'm going to um, do affiliate marketing. Great way to do it. You, you find and recommend fantastic products or courses that other people are doing and then recommend them to your community. So you can do that on a blog. Um, and uh, I'm going to uh, do some of my own courses again later in the year. I haven't done any courses for years, so I thought that would be quite cool and fun to go and do that. Um, so, yeah, so you can build a blog and you can sell affiliate products. You can sell online courses. You can sell physical products. You could, if you had a really obscure interest, right? So let's say that you were completely into, this is probably not obscure, but it's obscure to me. Let's say you were completely into um, fly fishing in some somewhere in Canada. <laughs> I don't know where they do fly, but let's say that's your thing. You just love it, right? Um, but you know, there doesn't seem to be products that you can set up. There probably are. There's probably this massive fishing world out there that I, I don't know about. But let's say that you can't sell a product. What you can do is you could build a, a blog around that, and you just create a boatload of content like you are pumping out those blog posts like you are going crazy and you're driving the traffic you're learning about search engine optimization you're growing the blog and then at some point you're going to have enough traffic to sign up to advert networks like mediavine and ad thrive and then you can put those on your blog and um, there are people out there generating in the tens of thousands of dollars every month from and that's simply you, and that's how you can monetize like your Game of Thrones passion. Let's say that you, if you are writing posts that the whole community loves and you're getting all this traffic because they're loving it and they're all talking about it and, you know, and you're writing blogs and they're commenting on it and you're all guessing what's going to happen and, and your traffic grows and grows and grows and grows, then, I mean, that's a bit of a more short-term game because obviously it ends at some point but oh what about the avengers you could do it if you are like a like a marvel Mar there'll be marvel businesses out there i guarantee you now very specific blogs and stuff all surrounded about marvel and they'll be making their money off advertising on their sites um or they'll be making their money because they're selling marvel figures so they'll be making affiliate commission from amazon associates selling marvel figures or they'll have set up a little e-commerce store and then be have Marvel um, cartoons that somebody's hand drawn for them because you can't use the thingies without copyright. So they'll have like pretend Marvel cat over towels or t-shirts, or they'll have Marvel quotes on t-shirts. You know, they'll have like Thor quotes on t-shirts, and they'll be selling those or caps or whatever from a print-on-demand e-commerce site. So from one interest, like I love the Avengers, you could have a blog selling advertising. You could be selling um, print-on-demand products. You could be selling affiliate products. You could be selling maybe stickers or something. Um, I don't know. The world's your oyster. I mean, you know, it's yeah. that's how you monetize. <laughs> so many options, actually. You know, it's a great answer and so thorough because I think people think, oh, no, I really love this thing, but there's no way for me to make money out of my random obsession with this particular TV show. And actually, you can. And those print-on-demand businesses i even enjoy them i know i own t-shirts with like random harry potter quotes on it because that's the thing i think is really funny and entertaining and yeah, yeah. the the world really is your oyster if you're just willing to kind of pick it stick with it and like you said kind of stay with that one thing and not chase the shiny object of what someone else is doing do you know, I was just, um, yesterday, I, actually, I was writing a blog post on how to get started on Redbubble, um, and I'm going to do it myself. I just, I, after after researching and then writing the post, I thought, oh, this is, I've got to try this. I have to try this myself. Um, and so I'm going to do it with my daughter, actually. I've decided we'll sit down and we'll pick a, a kind of a niche and we'll decide what we want to do, and then we're going to go and start there. But here's what I learned about selling on, on a site like Redbubble, which is a print-on-demand site, right? So... Um, for those people who aren't sure what I'm talking about, it basically means you create a design. Sorry about this. My husband's obviously just had lunch. 
but let's say you create a design, yeah, which whatever your design is, mm -hmm. and then, um, in fact, this is better, a water bottle. They'll have like a blank, completely plain water bottle or mug or cup, and you put your design on it, right? So you never actually touch the products. Redbubble has all the products. It has towels and T-shirts and caps and socks and water bottles and wall art and stuff like that, and that's all blank. And you put your design up on Redbubble, and then it displays your design over all the products, and then people come and buy your products, right? Hugely competitive because it's free. It's completely free to go and do this. All you have to do is upload your designs, and then Redbubble sell them, right? Yeah. Or you go and promote them and sell them via Redbubble. Hugely competitive because it's free, it's easy. So, you know, how on earth are you going to stand out amongst anybody else? And when I did my research and read all the people that were making 10, 15, 20,000 units of sale in a month or a year or whatever, the, the, it rang true. Everything they said was you need to be uploading 10 to 20 to 30 designs every single day. So that takes some tenacity, right? And I said at the bottom of my blog post, you want to do this? Set yourself a goal to upload 10 different designs every single day for 12 months, not one month or two months, and then we'll see how we're going. Set yourself a mental goal that says, I might not make a lot of money out of this for 12 months. So, as a, but, but I love it. I think it's a great business model. I think this could be really good fun. So I am going to commit. So for me, for instance, I'm a photographer. Oh, I'm not a photographer. I'm a terrible photographer. But I take lots of pictures while I'm out traveling. I've got 25,000 photos of sunsets and all that stuff. So I could say to myself, right, I'm going to go and edit and upload 10 sunsets every single day for the next 365 days. Yeah. Okay, now in 12 months, maybe I'm going to start. And once you get there, once you're making the money, that's the other thing I learned, you make it for years. Apparently, once you're up there and you're starting to make the, it starts to come in almost passively for you know a long, long time. Um, but you have to put that effort in in the first place. So I think Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about patience. He's always talking about patience. And I think that's one of his critical messages because people want everything to happen yesterday. And unfortunately, like with my blogging business, I've been doing it for 18 months now. I had to take some time out last year because my mum was poorly, but I've been doing it and it's taking time. It's not, it's going to be another year, I think, before I really see or reap the benefits of it. So you're talking two to three year leading. Who's got that kind of patience? But if you want a lifestyle business where actually you can work your own hours, yeah. then you are going to need, it's not something you're going to do. And in a month's time, you're going to be earning the dodge. You need to be saying to yourself, this is a six, 12 month lead in, and I'm going to really just work hard until I start seeing the, the benefits. Yeah. And I think that's another reason why maybe starting it as a side hustle is a better idea because then you've still got your normal nine to five kind of keeping you afloat as you're going. And then when you see that like first set of returns, you can say, okay, cool. Now I'm actually making enough. I can say goodbye to this nine to five that I've been using to just get me through and do what yeah. I really enjoy, what I'm passionate about. Um, and the time's going to pass anyway, right? The time is going to pass anyway. So people that go, oh God, wait, 12 months, I'm going to do as a side hustle for 12 months while I'm working. Well, the 12 months is going to pass anyway. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just do it? Because <laughs> it will work. It will work if you've got, and if it doesn't, if let's say by some crazy thing that you put that amount of effort in and it doesn't work, well, what you've learned along the way, the people you've met the doors you've opened the opportunities that have presented themselves to you i'm telling you now within that 12 months you'll be like oh my gosh there's now oh i can do right okay there's that opportunity there's that you know your your issue isn't going to be what to do it's going to be what not to do because there's just so many opportunities yeah and you learn so much in that 12 months definitely all right now one of the biggest things you've mentioned is building that audience and building that email list so i want to talk to you a little bit about traffic sources so what do you think are the best sources of traffic for a small business that's just starting? I think that's a very difficult question to answer. I think the best source of traffic is whatever you feel you can commit to doing on a consistent basis. So if you are, um, if you love videoing and you really enjoy making little videos with music and stuff like that, then great. TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, they're for you. You know, if you, if you feel you can do that and upload two or three videos every day, for a long, consistent period of time, then that works for you. If you love images and photographs and you love doing little captions and talking to people and stuff like that, then probably Instagram is, is your jam. If, like me, I'm in, I'm in my current writing thing, so I've, I've, I was in my social media thing, to, 
10 years ago. It's going to come back because I'm fascinated by TikTok and we're starting traveling again in June and I just know I'm going to make lots of videos. But right now I'm in my writing thing. So I can sit down in the morning and I can knock out two or 3,000 words on a decent blog post and I can publish it and I can do that consistently. So for me right now, SEO, I've, I've, I've immersed myself in search engine optimization. I'm researching keywords and I'm writing every single day. And so for me right now, that's my best traffic source because it's what I can commit to on a daily basis. Um, for somebody else who really enjoys maybe writing shorter posts, um, but does enjoy that writing, maybe LinkedIn is going to be your traffic source or maybe medium.com is going to be your traffic source. So the traffic is everywhere. I mean, it's all over the, the internet. You just have to decide what you uh, are willing to commit to on a, con so if you're somebody who thinks, right, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to master Instagram and I'm also going to build a TikTok audience. And by the way, I'm going to build LinkedIn at the same time and I'm going to write on medium and I'm also going to, you're just never going to do, you know, but my advice is pick one, just pick one traffic source that you really feel you can commit to on a really consistent basis. Build that traffic source. And when you then go out to diversify onto other traffic sources, it will all come so much easier because you've already got a base with which to now say, hey guys, guess what? I'm now starting my Instagram journey. Come on. And if you think you're too late, you're not because tra new traffic sources pop up all over the place all the time. So you're never too late. You know, it's not... Sure, there's always those kind of early adopters who build massive audiences really quickly when a new thing comes online. But it doesn't matter if you're providing quality content, you're adding value to people, you're making people laugh, or um, you're making, you're helping people transform their lives, or I don't know, you're, you're giving them more information, education, helping them with their hobbies or interests or whatever. As long as what you do is quality and you're adding value, you will build an audience. And the only reason you're not, if you're trying at the moment, is probably because you're diversified too much and you're trying to do too many things. So really get those blinkers on or focus in on one traffic source and make that your traffic source of choice. Definitely. I think, um, and it also definitely depends on your niche. So got to figure out where your audience really is hanging out. But then how do you take them from being just visitors to your content to being on that email list? What is the like one thing that you really advise to kind of hook your audience and say, actually, hey, by the way, if you join me here, I've got more to give you? Yeah, that's so that's now become a lot more challenging on social media. That was so much easier back in my day. Um, <laughs> that was a lot easier because uh, I think, in, you know, back in 2010, 2011, et cetera, that even the social media sites saw how valuable companies, you know, wanted to be on them in order to generate people back to their own um, websites and blogs. Whereas now it's like a no-no. If you're on TikTok, you're on TikTok. We're not even going to let you link out. Or if you're on Instagram, you're on, you know, we're not, you, you cannot link out. Um, so that becomes more challenging depending on the profile, depending on the network that you choose. Um, but here's what I would do. First of all, I would definitely set up um, a, a website or an email landing page. You don't have to have a blog. That's not vital here, but you need to have an online presence, which is yours, you know, off of the social media networks. You've got to have one place where people can go to. Even some of the biggest YouTubers in the world have just got one page landing page at the very least where you can contact them and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you can get in touch with, with them by email or what have you. So I would definitely set up your, your home on the web. Go and get a domain name and create your little piece of the web. Um, and within that, create a place where people can sign up. You want to have that email funnel set up. Um, that might be a newsletter. It might be, I would recommend it's a more specific, immediate downloadable item that within your niche that's going to add value, a checklist, a template, a PDF, a three video course, I don't know, something that's going to add value and people want to give you their email address for and set that up. And these days you can use, you know, the tools aren't as expensive as they used to be. You can go off and use the big email um, thingies. I won't name names, but you can go off. But, you know, a lot of them are super expensive. And I don't think even system.io, you've got your own email um, yeah. Thing within the platform, haven't you now? So, you know, there's so much more affordable tools out there these days than having to use some of the really big email providers that cost an absolute fortune. Um, so, yeah, so definitely set up that email funnel, put some, get some emails set up, get, you know, you only have to email once a week, it doesn't have to be, you know, daily and all the rest of it. 
get, get, get yourself six, eight weeks, three months worth of weekly emails set up, ready to go, so you're not stressing about it. Um, and then really the best thing you can do is go out. Let's, let's take TikTok as a great example because it's one of the newest platforms and you literally can't direct people from TikTok to a landing page. So here's what I would do. Um, I would be basically making my TikTok videos. And then as I built my audience, um, I would be probably at that point on social media, this is the challenge, I would probably start to run some low cost ads, specifically sending people to my landing page because social media is so challenging now. On Instagram, I would work my what's name off to get over 10,000 um, uh, followers yeah. so that people could swap up and go directly to my landing page. But also, even now, people are saying, oh, God, Facebook ads are really expensive and Instagram ads are really expensive. Well, I'm hurtling towards 50 right now, and you want to try newspaper ads and radio advertising from 20 years ago. You want expensive? Then go and check. This is not expensive. You know, if it, if it costs you 50 cents for somebody to sign up to your email list, it sounds expensive, but, you know, not, not compared to the old days. Um, and... So yeah, so I would, I would really, I would have that funnel so people start to know your name, know who you are, know your brand, and then they're going to go and try and check you out online anyway, and they're going to find you, and then your landing page is going to be there. Secondly, just keep building that audience. Keep building that, that people and tell them where your freebie is. Tell them they need to go and get it. Tell them it exists. If you can link to your landing page, link to your landing page. Mm. Um, and just wherever you can in your content, tell people that email funnel exists and that they need to come and get that free gift or whatever that you've got or more information and just gradually start to build your email. It's not going to happen overnight, um, but the more you are just committed to building that audience um, and, and, and you know your goal, your goal is to get them to sign up to that landing page, it's amazing how fast you will actually start to get those sign-ups. Definitely. And I think that kind of marriage between using these social media platforms, because everyone's on social media, I think there are very few people who do not have a Facebook account or some sort of Instagram account. And lots of people, like you said, are going on to TikTok and the rules there are a little bit like faster and looser because it's still quite a new platform. So lots of people are able to go viral um, yes. depending on their content. So yeah, I do want to ask you one more question about social media though, because obviously you've seen that there's this lovely preference and trend towards video content where they're like, okay, cool. We're going to show more Instagram reels than anything else. And short videos on YouTube shorts are going to be what we show everybody on mobile devices. And then the same with TikTok, those are really short video form content. Do you think that it's a good idea if someone is comfortable enough to be on video that they start leaning into that kind of content? Uh, yes, I'm going to say yes. No, I'm going to say yes because video is becoming such a, it, well, it has become over the last years. So, but I, the reason I hesitate is because I don't think these days you have to be comfortable being on camera anymore. I think if you can tell a story um, with your videos, it doesn't necessarily have to be you anymore. You know, you see all these fantastic travel videos out there. Um, and I started making them, and I'm nowhere to be seen. You know, it's the ocean, it's the beach, it's the sky, it's the trees, it's the whatever. Um, so depending on what your niche is and what you're trying to do, um, let's say that you're in the food niche, for instance. You know, you, you never even need to be there. You just need to video the food you're making. Or um, let's say you're an artist and you're doing drawings. You know, again, it's the, it's the paintbrush and the drawing. So I think even if you're not comfortable being on, in fact, I think there's more of an opportunity now for people. When I started years ago, it was all about you being on camera. Mm -hmm. And I think nowadays, if you're not comfortable being on camera, you just need to think of really creative ways to tell your story via video that doesn't involve you being on camera. And there's still lots of old marketers who go out there and say, oh, it's got to be you. It's got, you know, that's how you're going to get viral. People have got to see you. Great. Good for them. And maybe it's true. Who knows? But if you're not comfortable being on camera, why even do it? Because you're, only, you're going to do it once or twice and you're never going to do it again anyway. So you might as well try and do something that actually you're going to enjoy and, you know, you, you, you can be consistent. I keep coming back to this, but I think it's really important that even if a trend says you want to go in one direction, if you know you're not really going to go in that direction because it's just not who you are and you're never going to do it consistently, then your best bet is to tweak it and go in a slightly different direction if you know that you're going to be consistent. Because at the end of the day, tenacity will trump talent every day of the week. I mean, it's great if you're talented and tenacious, 
but tenacity will trump talent. I'm telling you now, Natasha, myself and my husband, we are not exceptional people. We are not, there is nothing particularly unique or extraordinary or we just are willing to work really hard. We're just willing to, to you know, do the grind, do the hustle, like, you know, and even that is something we work really hard, you know. You know, it, it, it's not hard, it's, it's, it's consistent. It, I just keep coming back to that word. We're just willing to put, you know, make the priorities, uh, identify our priorities and then be consistent with what we're doing. Um, and that will trump anything else you do any day of the week, so. Yeah, definitely. I think that kind of being willing to just keep working and keep at it and like you said, be consistent, be tenacious is the thing that makes the difference because talented as you might be on YouTube, if you don't post a video for a day, the algorithm's going to be like, ah, oh, inconsistent, never mind. We'll stop putting them out there because um, they want people to stay on their platforms. Um, so if you're consistent, if you're something that they can rely on to keep people on their platform, then yeah, they're definitely going to use you more. Um, my last big question for you is what does the future look like for you? So what's your medium term or your long term goal looking like? I know you've got this blog that you're working on and leaning into at the moment. Yeah, my long term goal. So it's an interesting one, actually. So I've been in online business now for 11 years. And so everything I know really is about online business. And yet um, we my daughter's finishing her exams um, this in the next couple of months. And come June, July, we will be leaving Phuket, Thailand, which is where I'm currently based, um, and we will start to travel again. I can't wait to just get, get the old backpack on and start traveling the world again. The last two years, it feels like time stood still in the last two years, hasn't it, over the pandemic? Um, but we will be traveling again, and I have become a bit fascinated with the whole videography, TikTok, telling the story through your travel video thing. I've become a little bit obsessed with that. Um, so I'm currently, I've, I've spent all this time building my blog around the online business side. The blog is called Your Lifestyle Business. So I've got a little bit of poetic license here, I feel. Um, and when we start traveling, I kind of want to start moving a little bit more into the travel side with it, you know. Um, and I think where the poetic license comes in is because it says your lifestyle business. So I'm talking about business and then I'm talking about lifestyle. Um, so really... My blog, Your Lifestyle Business, is a long-term goal of mine now. I, I, I feel like I'm taking everything I've learned over the last 11 years and I'm putting it all in one place, which is on my, my website. Um, and I'm writing blog posts all about our Amazon journey and how to start on Amazon or how to start on e-commerce. And I'm trying to educate anybody who comes to it, how do you build your lifestyle business, you know, and not just, not just the theory of oh, how you do it, but actual step by step. Okay, so you want to go and set up an e-commerce business? Here's how you do it. You want to go and start your print-on-demand business? Here's how you do it. You want to get started on Amazon? Here are the steps you take. So my blog posts, God, some of my blog posts are like 19, my Amazon post is 19,000 words long because I literally do a course in a blog post. But it's because I'm just taking all of everything I've learned over the last 11 years and I'm just putting it all down on paper um, and building the blog. Um, so that's really good fun and I'm really enjoying that. Um, but then as I, as we go traveling over the next few years, I feel there'll also be lots more, um, travel posts and places to see and things to do and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, and that's really the goal over the next 10 years is just to grow the blog. I've got this real bee in my bonnet, such a bee in my bonnet about selling, um, like little, ever since I've, I went to Kiki K in Australia, there's this shop called Kiki K in Australia, which sells jur like journals, dream journals and, and you know, bucket list journals and things like that. And I know it's not new or unique. Millions of people do it, but I've got a real bee in my bonnet to have my own line, of sort of travel journals, travel diaries, things like that. Um, so that's going to kind of be a thing at some point. Um, and like I said, I'd like to do a few, I used to love doing video courses and I haven't done any for years. So I'm thinking I might do a few of those maybe end of this year or next year and get them on the website. Not, no launches anymore. They'll just be evergreen on the website. You can come and get them if you want. Just all about building your business, traveling the world, living, you know, your, the life. Um, so that's really it. Um, and I just want to, I just want to inspire, I guess, as many people as I can to, to get out there and make it happen. It's not, you know, it's not always easy. It's, it's, you know, it's tough. It does take a lot of tenacity and just plodding 
in one step in front of the other. And there are times, I'm sure as you know, Natasha, there are times where you just think, oh, this is useless, you know, this is going nowhere. Um, nothing's happening. I mean, there have been months where my blog traffic just hasn't grown, you know, where I've just I've published blogs and blogs and blogs and nothing's happening. You're like, oh, come on, this is ridiculous. But you just have to have faith in yourself, I think. You have to have faith that it does work because somebody else has done it, so the model's been proven, um, and you can do it too. Um, and I, th I think my biggest message is that you don't have to go out and be the next best, brightest thing. You know, you don't have to go out and suddenly become Brené Brown, or you don't have to go out and suddenly become Gary Vee, or you don't have to go out and suddenly become Mel Robbins, or whoever you look up to as your mentor online. You don't need, just be you, do you, and just put one, one foot in front of the other every single day. Because if you have the tenacity to do it, then that's what is going to, to make your success. 100%. Now, um, I have a few short questions just to end off the interview for you. So what piece of advice would you give to your 18-year-old self looking back? Oh, gosh. I would have said, don't go out and get a job. Go traveling right now and make life happen for you. Yeah, I would have. I, I, I keep telling my daughter, she's 15, and I'm like, sweetheart, how else can you earn your money rather than going and getting a job? Think about it. How else can you do it? Can we set up an e-commerce store? Can we sell printables on Etsy? Can we, um, you know, write a blog for you? Can we build you a TikTok audience? How else can we do it? Just if, oh, if I was 18 again, I wouldn't, gosh, 10, 12, 13 years of my life <laughs> working with somebody else. I said, no, forget it. Go and see the world. Go and see the world. Definitely. Do you know, we've been traveling for the last 11 years and I have changed as a person more than I ever have before, just through seeing other cultures and people and how people live. And, you know, I just, it changes you, it broadens your mind. So, yeah, I would have said to myself, get out, go see the world and find another way to make money. Definitely. I think that's a great goal and something that you should tell more 18 year olds is like, you don't need to follow this typical journey that everyone is telling you you can do. You can do anything. The yeah. world is completely different. Especially now. these kids. Especially these kids going through university, if they don't want a profession, if they're not going to go out and be, a, 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 sorry, pursue a profession like a, a, I don't know, like a doctor or a lawyer or not, which needs very specific training, if you have no idea what you want to be or, or what you're going to do or whatever, then for goodness sakes, don't go and borrow a ridiculous amount of cash of the government, bearing in mind that it's a business for them. Please remember that all kids going off to university and college, this is a business for them. Um, and I see it with my daughter. She is primed from about age 12. Everything is primed to get them to go to university. I mean, it's a whole fa manufacturing wheel going on there of how do we get these kids through university? And all these poor kids who come out with these degrees and all the rest of it and owing the government thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds, and they still don't really know what the hell they want to do. Don't do it. Go and travel the world. Go and find out what your unique ability is first. Go and find out what you love about life. Go and find out what interests you. And if you want to go back to college in your 20s, go back then. When you're 30s, in your 40s, if you suddenly discover in your 30s, oh, my gosh, that's something I want to do, then go and do it then. But you don't have to do it at 18. 100%. I think that's really important advice, especially like I'm a former teacher and that is what I would tell my kids. I was like, you don't have to go and be a lawyer or a doctor. There are lots of lawyers. There are lots of doctors. If that's not something you love, why would you do it? Um, and then my next question is, what is the most incredible place you've traveled to and where are you really looking forward to traveling next? Oh, goodness. Oh, there's too many. So I'll, quit. I'll pick literally what comes off the top of my head. I think um, doing um, hot air balloon ride over Bagan in Myanmar. Wow. Um, was one of the most incredible experiences I've had. Bagan, Myanmar, God love it, is a, a country in crisis at the moment. But um, Bagan is this place that's absolutely riddled. There are thousands of stupas and temples, you know, all across this area. And you go at five o'clock in the morning and you hot air balloon over them and they're absolutely gorgeous. Cambodia is another country that people just must go and visit. It's just incredible. It's got such a tragic backstory with Khmer Rouge and the Vietnam War and all the stuff that happened there but it's the place, the people are absolutely incredible. Um, and also, sorry, Yosemite, just trekking up the mountains in Yosemite to see all the waterfalls and everything is a memory that will stay with me forever and a day. And there's a million more. I met Mark Zuckerberg on the Great Wall of China. How can I not get that in here? It was back in 2013 and he was in China trying to get the Chinese to open up to Facebook. 
and I was on the Great Wall of China with my sister and she thought it was Chris Martin from Coldplay mm. and I got a bit crushed and I said, no, it's Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and I took a little picture and all I didn't say, he had a whole entourage around him. I chatted with a couple of the guys that were with him, but yeah, so that was quite a cool experience meeting, but not cooler than the hot air balloons in Bagan, by the way, or um, seeing Cambodia, but it was a cool experience. Um, and where are some places I would really like to go? Um, I really want to go to Victoria Falls. Um, I really want to go and see, uh, I want to go to the Serengeti, but I don't just want to go on a safari. I actually want to see the great migration. You know, I want to see when all the, the um, what are they called? Not They're not buffalo, are they? Oh gosh, I'm going to get killed. Please. See, they are, um, oh, there's plenty of stuff that migrates through the Serengeti, but the one thing that you definitely have to go see there is the gorillas in the mist. Um, oh, is it? Oh, gorillas in the mist. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. At the bottom. Oh, sure. Have you been to safaris? Have you been to safaris? I, I'm quite lucky. I live very close to, um, well, I'm quite like in Joburg. Uh, everything is quite close by. So there's uh, Kruger National Park, which is a couple of hours drive. And that's a massive national park where roaming lions, animals, everything you could possibly want to see. And it's, yeah, on our doorstep. So we get quite lucky here. That's one of the benefits of being in Africa but I haven't done the Serengeti and it is on my list um there's a volcano that you can go and stay just above right above the last yeah. active plateau yeah. of the volcano and then you can go and walk with the gorillas which is apparently life-changing so yeah. I also want to go to China and I want to go to a national park that I can't pronounce its name but it was the um inspiration behind the avatar mountains the, you know the mountains and avatar so it's called the Zhangji National Park or something, and it looks amazing. Oh, so many places, so many places. Watch my TikTok, <laughs> which I've got about I've got about ten videos on there at the moment, and I think I've got about twenty views on them. So I'm certainly not going viral at this stage. But keep your eye on my TikTok over the next few years. It's going to have all these wonderful places. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. Um, all right, and then my final question for you is: Where can our listeners find you? If you say all your tags, I will post them in the description sure yourlifestylebusiness.com baby that's where i want you to go go and see me at my blog yourlifestylebusiness.com um you'll find everything on there you will um there is a sign up to join my 21 day free email course um to learn how to start your own lifestyle business um and that comes with a big workbook and everything that you can work through as well with checklists and stuff like that to really sort of help you just figure out what, what you want to do, the kind of niche you want to get into, that kind of stuff. So yourlifestylebusiness.com. And it also, there's just loads and loads of blog posts on there all about how to build your lifestyle business in whatever niche you want, whether Amazon e-commerce, online courses, affiliate marketing, freelancing, whatever. So. So thank you so much for joining me and for giving me your time. And thank you to our listeners today. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to this on a podcasting app, subscribe to the System podcast so that you never miss an episode. System.io is a digital marketing software platform packed with all the tools you need to grow your online business.